the European economy is doing better than the German economy. Germany is the sick man of Europe in the moment. Uh, there has been a decline in uh, manufacturing output trend-wise since 2018. It's not a short-term phenomenon. And uh, that has to do with the automobile industry, which is the heart of the German uh, industry, and many things hinge on that. So uh, we are dec on a declining trend. And then comes the war. Putin cut off the gas. Uh, Germany shut off deliberately its uh, nuclear power plants. And one wonders where the energy should come from, uh, uh, which uh, a manufacturing industry needs. and, 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 and economy which is based on that. Uh, investors have doubts. Yeah, I haven't heard Germany called the sick man of Europe for a very long time as well. Is it possible you're overstating the state of the decline? I mean, the German auto industry is in a period of enormous change as well and reinvigorating its production line, reinvigorating its technology to compete with the Teslas of this world, to compete with the Chinese. And, in, and it's the same story on the energy fund as well. Um, having had perhaps a misguided reliance on Russia for so long, Germany is having to catch up and, and reinvigorate that too. Yeah, yeah, but from some source the energy has to come. And if we just rely on wind and solar energy, which is nice green energy clearly uh, without a climate effect, uh, we will have a volatility problem. Uh, sometimes there is no wind and no sun. Uh, there are dark lulls. What are you doing then? You need to fill them with conventional energy. So it's very difficult to have this double structure, which we uh, will have to sustain in the future. On the one hand, the green volatile energy, on the, uh, on the other hand, the conventional energy to fill the gaps. Uh, this is double cost, this is high energy cost, and this is not good for industry. It is a difficult course. Yeah. You say also not only industry, but the population, and I'll quote you from a recent piece, the population is rebelling against climate extremism. Is, is rebelling too strong? I mean, the, the Greens are part of the government now. They, 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 they have a certain mandate to do what they're doing. Yes, of course. Uh, people thought uh, that by moving to the green energy, uh, one would have even a competitive advantage in the world. And so because government officials know better what is good for firms than firms themselves, which is a somewhat dubious assumption. And now they realize that this all goes too far. Uh, by 2024, the, the oil furnaces were su supposed to be suspended. Not all, but those uh, whose life legally defined life was over. They had to be uh, replaced uh, with, uh, with um, heat pumps. Uh, good idea, but you know, uh, you need a lot of electricity. It's very, very expensive because you need uh, low temperatures in the house and people are upset about it. Uh, they were so upset that they forced the government to postpone the plan a little bit, uh, two, three uh, further years, but it's coming very soon. And by 2015, uh, there is a ban on combustion engines. If these were market developments, this would be uh, acceptable and, and good, but it has nothing to do with the market. It is central planning. It is a dictate by the EU Commission that by 2035 there won't be combustion engines. And one does not do the calculation how much CO2 is emitted, how much CO2 is emitted by a Tesla. The, exha uh, the exhaust pipe is, is still there. It's sitting a few kilometers apart in, uh, in the power plant, in the coal power plant. Uh, Tesla is not only driving with uh, green energy. So it's all good. It's wonderful to have this new green world, but the government should not dictate it, but rather use uh, pricing systems uh, so to allow individuals to choose between alternatives. And that is not the case. This dictatorship with rigid commands is something which annoys the people.